fucking in Jimmy Hoffa's Teamsters Union, you'll know if you got your food, your clothing, your medicine, a truck brought it. The day our trucks stop, America stops. Solidarity, solidarity. Can you do that? Of course not. I'm Academy Award winner, Al Pacino. Welcome to my master acting class. You need it if you want to do your own personal tango like this. I'm too old, too blind. If I was half the man I was five years ago, I'd take a flamethrower to this place. <laughs> Thank you very much, folks. Woo! I'm Phil Gordon. Thank you. I had it. I have it written right here. Wait and pause for applause. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for indulging me. You know, it's great to be here. And a big shout out to our friends at the Continental Restaurant. My friends out in Chicago, Woo! right, right in Buffalo Grove, in fact. Yeah. Hey. Isn't it great to see actors like Al Pacino still making wonderful films like The Irishman? It was so cool the way Scorsese used the anti-aging process to make the actors appear like 30 years younger. <laughs> I'll tell you this, my wife sure liked it. Oh, did she <laughs> swoon after we saw The Irishman? Oh, what Al Pacino used to do for me in the 90s. <laughs> hey, I got a bit jealous. I said, hey, honey, what about what I used to do for you in the 90s? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> she looked at me and she said, well, if you can still throw me down on a kitchen table to make rough sex, I'm up for it. Otherwise, take out the trash. <laughs> you know, after she said that, I took the challenge and I surprised myself. I picked up three full hefty lawn and leaf bags. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to congratulate everybody that's sheltering in place. For months, we've been locked down with only family members and significant others, <laughs> but it does appear to be having good effects. The good news, of course, is that the infection rate is down, but divorce rates are way up. <laughs> and so is alcohol consumption. I heard when this is done, the AA in Tucson is going to hold their meetings at the convention center. <laughs> in my family, it's not so much a custody fight for the kids, but who gets control of the TV remote? <laughs> Your Honor, uh, between living with my teenage son or being able to freeze frame Heidi Klum in a bikini, uh, I think I'd rather adopt the Samsung. <laughs> hey, I don't know about you, but I've been binge watching way too much TV. You do? I figured. And the ads are stressing me out. Designer face mask commercials, drug companies selling pills for diseases <laughs> I don't even I don't even know exist. Ask your doctor if ad nauseum is good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and insurance companies. I can't take it anymore. I had to consult my virtual therapist that was going so crazy. And you know what? <laughs> she gave me a great technique. She said, when I get too fed up with the commercials, I should do a nice cleansing meditation. <laughs> Why don't you join me? Instead of watching the insurance commercials, I picture myself running. In slow motion on a pristine, pearly white sand beach. And then I'm laying back on my back, floating in pristine, crystal clear, crystal clear turquoise blue water. And followed by a very pleasant drive in my quiet Tesla along the ocean. And then I pull in my driveway and mayhem ensues. I hit the fire hydrant, <laughs> flood the property, drowning Flo and Doug. Then the Limu Emu gets loose and eats the gecko Geico. <laughs> <laughs> no geckos were, were hurt in the filming of this commercial. Hey, anyway, it's a good thing I have farmers. They've seen almost everything. 
<laughs> like a lot of you, I bet you're trying to use the time productively in isolation. And like every comic, I'm writing a screenplay. Here's my elevator pitch. It's a kid's movie. Joe Exotic meets Mary Poppins. <laughs> Instead of singing to those brats that I'll behave, Mary and Joe feed one of them to a big cat. <laughs> Watch how quickly the other ones start to brush their teeth and get ready for bed. <laughs> and no more spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. Now those little <laughs> punks will either take their damn medicine or lose a hand. <laughs> I'm already working on part three. It's going to be a legal thriller where Joe Exotic goes to court with America's <laughs> top lawyers on either side. Don't miss it. It's Tiger <laughs> King Justice, Lerner versus Roe. <laughs> Thank God that the medical marijuana dispensaries were declared essential businesses. Boy, did they get that right. I never would have gotten through these past few months without it. The place <laughs> I go is very cautious, though, very cautious. Everything is wiped down and the employees wear face protection. You know, it brings back memories. When I used to <laughs> buy my pot from a guy in a mask in the alley behind the Waffle House. <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong. I love the dispensaries, but in some ways I kind of miss the thrill of the drug buy. I hear one upscale dispensary in Beverly Hills is running a nostalgia drug buy experience. This is where you go behind the store to a dumpster where you buy a nickel bag from a shaky, strung out teenager holding a boom box and a Saturday night special. <laughs> and you know what? I finally am getting better at balancing the different strains. You know, there's the sativa, the euphoric, up feeling strains, or the indica, the mellowing or down strains. <laughs> I did have one very bad experience, though. One night I swallowed an entire indica brownie, not realizing that it was made to serve 12. <laughs> then I binge watched TV. <laughs> oh man, I went from mellow to Mother Teresa. <laughs> I watched, <laughs> after watching a dozen St. Jude's Children's Hospital PSAs and a couple of PETA commercials, <laughs> I cashed in my bar mitzvah bonds and wired them to Marlo Thomas. I told her, give the money to the kids, and if there's anything left over, get the dogs a place in Hawaii. <laughs> hey, and finally, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with this. I passed some major milestones recently. I turned 65, and I retired. Woo! Yeah. Oh, hey, pause for applause. I had it written right there. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it's great. And I'll tell you, you know what the, the best thing of all about being retired you get to spend more time with friends. And right before this shelter in place stuff started is when I retired. And I'm so blessed to have lifelong buddies who threw me a retirement party at the Spearmint Rhino Gentlemen's Club in Las Vegas, Nevada. Woo hoo! What a time. <laughs> it was the same place and the same guys who celebrated my 21st birthday there. What a time. We ate the same great pizza. We drank the same great beer. I just wish they wouldn't have hired the same topless dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Her stripper name is Pearl Necklace. <laughs> I always pause there. It takes a second. You got to give it up for Pearl, though. You should have seen her dance, too. She still dances great. This time she was swinging between two poles. You know, the kind with the tennis balls on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and the show didn't end well for Pearl. I was so sad. She passed around a tip jar and she had forgotten to take her teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> and I was the guest of honor. So she sauntered over to me and she said, uh, hey, uh, sweetheart. Oh, Pearl was a smoker. Did I mention that? <laughs> Why don't you come out up to the VIP room for a sexual favor? Well, I thought about it. I said, well, okay, Pearl. I, why don't you take those red satin hot pants and that lacy push-up bra and put them back on? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Full disclosure, though, I have been to the VIP room at the Spearmint Rhino Club, and it does meet my one requirement for lovemaking these days. It's dark. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody needs to see this naked. Nobody. Hey, that's my time, folks. I'm Phil Gordon. Thank you so much. Yay. Give it up for Phil Gordon. <laughs>